Welcome to Rich Dad Stockcast with Andy Tanner. And today we have an interesting show because it just launched just from a quick conversation where Andy told me something that it didn't make sense to me. <laughs> and I purposely did not ask him to make it make sense because I wanted to save it for this show. So before we get to this mystery show, make sure you hit submit. Make sure you put some comments in. And in fact, you can even put a comment like, that's a stupid mystery. I got a better one for you. The That'd mystery show, huh? The mystery show with Andy Tanner. <laughs> I don't think All it's right. a mystery. No? <laughs> no, uh, it's a fact. <laughs> it's, okay, well, we'll get, we'll get to that. Show is sponsored by Cashflow Academy and its free course, Zero to Cashflow. Look at our pro producer. She's so cool. I do think that's fun to say it's sponsored by it, but... Uh, real quick, Zero to cash flow is it's a free training and it can teach. I'm going to use this word, Andy. Don't yell at me. It can teach anyone how to go from zero to cash flow and it can do it. I don't want to ruin the, the surprise here. You can do it in a day if you follow these directions. Uh, I'm not saying you can do it the best way possible in a day, but in a day you can go from zero to cash flow. So I want to throw that out there, Andy. I'm going to say this. Thank you for sponsoring the show with that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's dig in because I'm super curious. So Andy said in the mystery show, invest investors are going to get screwed this month. And I'm yeah. curious why why would that be? Because right now I think we're we're at the top of it. We keep saying bubble, but it keeps growing and growing and growing. So how come you're predicting this month? Well, when you <clears throat> when you make a transaction you might just boil it down to two things. Uh, there's what you pay and there's what you get. So we're pretty clear on what we're going to pay. Right. Uh, think about this. If you were to go to the gas station and gas was at a record high, what are you paying? What are you getting? You're still getting the same old gallon of gas, but you're paying more for it. If you were to go and, and buy anything, uh, when it's at its all time high, you know, what kind of feeling does a person have? Is that, Good news when you say, sweetheart, gas is $7 a gallon. Let's run and fill up the car, the boat, the RV, the lawnmower, and hey, everything else that cars. takes Yeah, Yeah, let's just fill it. Um, and so when stock, a lot of people understand that that as an investor, uh, it, price means nothing. It means you, nothing. You Retur might want to say Retur that again. Well, people, people freak out when they hear this, but price doesn't mean anything. It's the return on investment uh, it's what I, is what I'm going to live with. Price is something that I do one time on one day in one instance, right? I click a mouse and I buy a stock. Okay, for every day from that second, it takes one second to buy something. That moment's over. From then on, it's what I have. It's what I receive. So a person might say it this way. Price is what I pay value is what I have. That's what I get. That's what I receive. That's what I'm going to own after. And so am I getting a value or am I not getting a value is really the question because paying price, you know, there, there's a, there's an old saying that says you get what you pay for. So maybe this price is worth it and maybe low prices are not. Uh, but there's also times where you are, are going to pay tremendous prices. Um, you know, Buffett's making a, a move on a single company. He's not buying the market. And up until just recently, the only stock that he's bought is his own. He bought more <laughs> Berkshire Hathaway, bought, you know, done buybacks. And so an investor like that sees these prices and he says, I don't think today's the day to go buy gasoline. I think it's too expensive. I don't think I'm getting much for what I'm paying. So uh, when I say that a lot of investors are, are going to get taken, uh, I mean, 401k guys, and even bigger than that segment is the mutual fund guys and the index fund guys and all these people that just, the, you know, buy because they're on schedule to do so. They're not asking the question, what am I paying? And what am I getting right now, uh, at these types of prices? So I, I, we can talk later in the show about, you know, how, I'll give you my opinion on how I'd approach it. Doesn't mean I'm not going to buy things. It means I'm going to scrutinize and ask the question, what am I getting? So um, so we so can talk me, more about that. Let me play the the common, <clears throat> excuse me, listener, viewer. You just said price doesn't matter, but doesn't. most people 
make the money in the stock market, buy low, sell high. So how can you well, say price doesn't matter? No, I, I would disagree with that. <clears throat> I disagree with that premise <clears throat> totally. Um, most people try okay. to make money in the stock market, buy low yeah. and sell high. But no, um, the greatest investors don't buy low and sell high, in my opinion. Uh, you know, there are people that flip houses and do very well. I have dear friends that flip houses and they've got a, a mechanism to force that appreciation, but they can force it. They have things they can do. You know, a guy like Kenny McElroy can force appreciation. He calls it re raising the NOI, the net operating income. Well, you can do that by replacing management. Well, as a stock owner, you can't replace the management. You're stuck with what you got. He can renovate that property. I don't get to buy shares of Apple and renovate the company. So, you know, in, in stocks, forcing appreciation. But even if you're gonna, even even if you're in real estate, it's the cash flow that is most important. If you look at Berkshire Hathaway's, I think it's probably the 2021 letter. Maybe it's the 2020 letter. I can't remember. Um, I think it's the 2020 letter. He says operating earnings is most important. That sounds like a real estate investor to me. You know, real estate investors are familiar with that terminology. You bring you know, someone like Kim Kiyosaki in and she'll say NOI divided by price. That's my cap rate. Her and Robert and Kenny, they're going to know that stuff like the back of their hand because they know the jargon. Well, if you, if you look at real estate and you want to get in the jargon, you have something called a capitalization rate. In other words, how fast am I making money? And it's two numbers. It's the, the net operating income. What does it earn? What's the profit, right? And they do that, you know, before things like debt and and just you know what does the thing make, and underneath they have a they have something called the value, which is the price they pay for it. So you have price, but you have what you're getting in return, the income. So whether it's stocks and a PE ratio or whether it's a cap rate from real estate, you're looking at basically two numbers that are really the foundation. So here, can I use an object lesson? Or do we have to go to break? So this this is. This is what I often draw and teach from. And, uh, you know, everyone, the ca all the, the faculty at the Cash Flow Academy have one of these in their office. This is a okay. cash flow jack. In yeah, this is a cash flow jack in the box. And the cash flow jack in the box has three important parts. The most important part is the handle, right? And this is where I do the work, right? And if I do enough work, then pretty soon the cash comes out. This is the <laughs> earnings. Okay. This right. is what I get. And then the third thing I have is a price tag. So you have three elements to an asset. You have the, the work that it does, which is really where your safety is. If it does quality work, then you're going to have you know safety. Uh, if you have a really strong company that is necessary, like a, you know, a utility company, you need electricity. That's very safe. We're going to need that. We're never going to wake up and say, well, no more electricity. We, we need that stuff. Um, the second thing is, is the cash that it makes and that's what you receive. In other words, you know, when I look at <clears throat> an asset, what am I going to go home with? Well, I'm going to go home with a machine that creates cash. So I've got to decide when I look at the price tag, is this price is, is what this machine does worth the price? So as you see the prices of the stocks go through the roof, Okay, great. The stock price is going up. Everyone thinks that's good news. Is that good news at the gas station? Is that good news at the grocery store? It's great for us that already have been owning and buying stocks for a long time. It's great for right. us. But for someone who's going to buy stocks this month, are you really excited about paying top, top dollar? You know, if I buy ExxonMobil at 55, right, which I did, and today it's 114 or whatever it is, well, I'm pretty happy because I bought it at 55. So I've right. almost doubled, right? Or a little more than doubled. But someone who has to buy it today, are they as excited to buy it at, at 100 and, you know, whatever it is? You know, it's probably like 115 or 114, whatever it is. Haven't looked, but I know it's a lot more than what I paid. So think about this. When I get that dividend, it's twice as good for me. Right. So let's say they throw out a 90 plus cent dividend. Let's say they throw out, you know, four bucks a year or whatever. Well, if they throw out four bucks a year and, and I'm, I'm paying, you know, 50 uh, and someone else is paying 100 to get that same money, they're not getting near the return that the guy and the guy that bought it at 30 
and the guy in COVID that bought it at 20, uh, they're getting a much better return on investment. So price doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, what is the return on investment uh, that you're going to get? You throw options and premiums against that. Man, you know, I, I get to leverage a covered call way more than someone who bought it at 100. And the guy that bought it at 10 gets better than I do. So, you know, price doesn't mean much. It's what are you getting? What is your return per dollar spent? Uh, and we have all kinds of cool charts and graphs that can illustrate why uh, the the investor that that or the trader, you know, the guy that's going to buy at high prices, where they there's nothing wrong with buying a stock right now, but what's your reason for buying it, right? And there's nothing wrong with buying stocks. What's wrong is if you just diversify or diversify, and you <laughs> just buy because you're buying with no reason, with no cognizance of what you're getting. Think about that for a minute. If I just said buy X, buy Y, buy Z, buy whatever, and it's and it's a hundred dollars, what does that tell you? Hey, 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 Greg, I've got a deal for you. It's ten thousand dollars to get in. Do you want to get in? Hey, Greg, I got a deal for you. It's a million dollars to play. Do you want to play? And a lot of people would just say, well, ten thousand dollars is cheap. I'll, I'll sure I'll go in, or a million's too big for me. I'll stay out. How do you make a judgment on the price? You don't even know what you're in. You don't even, was it stocks? It really doesn't matter. Just it's $10,000 to play. Right. That gives me no information, right? How do you, yeah, how do you buy anything just on price? Price is meaningless. Hey, I have a deal for you. It's 250 grand. You want to get in? You want to well, get in? What, because it's Sandy Tanner, I want in. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, but even then you say, well, I think I know what I'm getting. Yeah. I think I know well, what I'm getting. To, so to even prove then, point. price in isolation means nothing. I right. have to know what I should expect, and it's cash flow, right? What kind of return am I going to get on that money? What am I getting when I put that risk out there? What's my reward if I'm going to take that risk? And that's what people are not asking when they buy uh, in a 401k every single month, every paycheck, they're going out and they have no idea what they're getting in return. So maybe when we come back from break, we'll break that down. And we'll show them what they're getting because we actually have data that shows what they're getting. And by the numbers, I'm not sure that it's it's the best. At least it isn't for what I would want. So I do, I do have two questions and I'm going to call them slight challenges. That, that I'd love for you to answer. I'm hoping these are the same questions that, that the people watching and listening have because I'd like to kind of represent them. So when we get back, I want to know, one, if you're still buying stocks now, you mentioned you could, yeah. but wouldn't it be better to wait for a crash? And if you buy stocks too high, doesn't it limit the amount you can buy and wouldn't that hurt your cash flow? So Let's when we talk get back, about we answer that. Those? all right, cool. Let's talk Thank you. about that. Fantastic. All right. Welcome back to Rich Dad's Stockcast with Andy Tanner, the brains of the show. And don't forget, this show is sponsored by Cashflow Academy. <laughs> I didn't know I was sponsoring. That's great. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know. Great way well, to put it, I guess. This is sounds as, very uh, radio like. Right. Sounds right. sounds right. very, you know, show like, you know. Ladies That's and gentlemen, right. sponsored by yeah. What are what are we sponsored by, Andy? Zero, Zero to cash. To that's Whoa. my that's my radio voice right there. Yeah, there so you go. check that out. Zero to cash flow is awesome. It is um, designed it awesome for the person. It, it's go designed ahead. for the person that has just maybe they've just read Rich, Rich Dad Poor Dad. They're like, I'd like to do this, and I'd like to do it fast. Uh, it's not a zillion dollars overnight, but if a person doesn't have income and income stream other than their job, and they'd like one. That's what I mean by zero to cash flow from starting with no passive income, zero passive income to getting a passive income. And, and I believe that uh, an education in paper assets can facilitate that uh, very quickly. Yeah. After watching the course, I'd have to agree. And just to remind everybody, it is free. It's, it's a gift from Andy. So we hope you take it. We hope you enjoy it. Um, education is, if you've listened to the show, probably the number one thing Andy would like to, cram down our throat because he believes not in giving advice what do you believe in andy 
Well, I believe in education. I don't know if I'd cram it down anybody's throat because it doesn't matter to me if they get educated or not. It doesn't affect my lifestyle. But uh, I will I will do this, though. I do fight against the culture of advice because I think it hurts people. But if people want to – I mean, if, if, if living in financial ignorance sounds like a good life plan, what am I going to say to anybody that believes that? <laughs> if someone go. says, well, no, I want to be financially ignorant. I don't want to know about money in my life. What am I going to say to that guy, right? Yeah, that's fair. We'll yeah. Just let it go. Yep. That's, yeah. You can't force people to heaven. You can't, you can bring a horse to water, so to speak. So there you go. Um, we'll get to the questions, but I think it was last week you said there are many ways to heaven. Yeah. Um, more ways to hell, but you got slammed because <laughs> oh, you did didn't I really? there's many ways to financial heaven. Oh, I so apologize. People, People thought they'd uh, take pot shots at you. So you know finally, I, at you I, instead of me, it's I the first time. That. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, my deepest apologies for the for the reference. What I meant was, is there's more than one way to skin a cat, but then the PETA people get after me. Uh, <laughs> I can't find an analogy that usually what I'd ask for people is to look at the speaker's intent and say, what was he trying to say? And right. what I was attempting to say clumsily was, there are many often uh, in the secular world of finance, many different pathways to reach your goal. How about that? Is that fair? Yeah, Is that better true. said? Yeah. Absolutely. So, okay. I'm just giving you a hard time. But uh, <laughs> we did say that when we got back, we'd cover a few things. Um, is Andy Tanner buying stocks now or is Andy Tanner waiting for a crash? Um I wanted to challenge you that price might matter because it does limit how many stocks you can buy. And I also wanted to challenge you that the price of stocks to me would matter on the speed of which you can get to an infinite return. So let's take those one at a time because they're beautifully said. And, and I appreciate you making that point for me because that's exactly the point. Let's say that, um, a person's in a 401k and they're putting a thousand dollars. I don't know what people put away. I think the average is around four or 500, but let's just say a nice round number, like a thousand dollars. And let's say stocks are at a hundred dollars. So that means that when they're on autopilot, that thousand dollars will buy 10 shares. Right. Okay. Now we have a market that's doubled. So now the stock is $200 a share. How many shares can they buy? So now you're five. five. Yeah. Half. So in other words, they're getting half as much asset for the same cost. They're getting half as much. That means they're getting rich half as fast because it's about the number of doors, the number of square feet in real estate, and it's about the number of shares in stock. And so if the price doubles, you can't buy as much. You're, you're not getting as much asset as you had before. Right. Um, and so, you know, if people want to argue with that, I don't care. They can argue, well, blah, 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 you know, whatever. But the fact remains is, uh, yeah, so you're exactly right, Greg. If the dollar is worth less, uh, it's not going to buy as much. And so, you know, how, how do people that diversify do that? Now, I have a little chart, and hopefully we don't get too wonky with this. <laughs> but I'd, I'd like to go into this chart and kind of ha have people see this visually because if you can give this a mass, you know, and, and kind of uh, bring something concrete to it, I'll, I'll show you something. Um, Robert Schiller is a Yale professor. I believe he won a Nobel Prize. And his book that he wrote after the subprime meltdown was called A Rational Exuberance. And what this is, it's an inflation-adjusted chart of this cash flow jack in the box right here. In other words, this tells me what I get when I buy the S&P 500. Uh, it tells me what I get in return. And this goes back to the 1800s, like 1870 something, I think is when they started keeping track of this. I think it's 1872. I don't have my glasses, so I can't really it, see, but it is. I think it's 1872. So what's interesting is, is you look at 1929, and you can see that first peak in 1929. That's quite a sharp peak. And you can see it's a quick rise and a quick fall. Mm -hmm. And people would pay, you know, 20 some odd dollars, I think it was, for $1 burnings. So the, the pricing on the left tells me how much you're going to pay. That's this red price tag here. 
how much are you going to pay for the dollar that comes out of here each year? What are you willing to pay for a machine that makes a dollar a year? So if you say, I'm willing to pay $10, well, that means that it pays for itself in 10 years, right? If I say, I'm willing to have this for 20, that means it pays for itself in 20 years, right? The mean, the, the median is about 16 to 17. So over the past, you know, what is that, 150 years or so, whatever that is, 200, what's 2024 to 1872? About 150 years or so, I'd say, you know, yep. give or take a little more. Over the past 150 years, the, the median has been about $16, $17 is what a person has paid uh, for, uh, for that return, and adjusted for inflation. Well, what you can really see is there's a couple of red spikes there, right? And you see the first one in 2000 where we were paying up to $40 uh, for, to get a machine. You pay $40 for a machine that would only make a dollar. Right. And that didn't last very long because we had a huge dot-com crash. It got back down into you know some type of normalcy uh, when you uh, had the subprime meltdown. COVID, you put in all this money and it jacked up the prices. Again, you can see just a little bit of time. And you'll see where we are today. And today we are at $34.90. So what I did with this particular graph is I colored in all the time where we were willing to pay more than we have today. In other mm -hmm. words, the red represents paying more than $34.90 a share. So 98% of the time, Greg, over the past 150 years, 98% of the time, you'd get more for your money than you do today uh, in a little bit after COVID and the dot-com. You were paying the most you could pay for earnings in those times. And so in, in my, you know, the, the lesson for people isn't that you can't go buy stocks right now. The lesson is, do you want to do this blindly? And do you want to just throw your money in and buy at the highest price as possible to get a dollar out of this jack in the box? If you're really a cash flow investor, this is a cash flow jack in the box. It has three parts, the handle, which is the work it does, the cash that it produces and the price tag that a person pays for the asset. And so right here in the S&P 500, it's never really been, you know, that much more expensive than it is now. 98% of the time you can get more for your money than we are getting right now. So does that make sense to you? Hopefully that yeah. makes sense to the viewers. It does, but that's not to say there's not deals to be found out there. This is just if Thank you take you. the medium or the average. Yeah. So, so how do most people do? That's exactly right. <clears throat> how do most people do this? Like, for example, mutual fund owners, they're diversified. They're buying an index, right? Everyone that buys the index fund, everyone that buys the SPX, everyone that, that buys the Vanguard 500, everyone that buys these diversified instruments, they're paying the most in getting the least, uh, you know, 98, 98% of the time you can do better than this, right? You're in the top 2% of prices right now in terms of expensive for buying a dollar. Now, to your point, Buffett is buying a secret asset. He's the mystery show. Hmm. Uh, in order to uh, be big, you have to file something called a 13F form, which basically gives transparency to the market. If we thought the mafia or some terrorists own most of the market, the confidence of the market go way, way down. But if you know that Buffett owns, you know, the large amount of Coca-Cola, you say, all right, he's the same guy. He's probably not going to crash Coca-Cola and sell it all tomorrow, right? So it brings confidence to the market. Well, Buffett filed a, 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 a I guess he, he, he filed a request through the SEC to say, hey, I'm buying a big position right now. I don't want to put it on my 13F because I don't want everyone to jump on the bandwagon and force my price up because I'm getting it cheap right now. I'll let you know what it is later, but I'd like to get a pass in my reporting. So he's buying something. Like you said, there are bargains to be found individually. So I would shop for stocks the way you shop for anything else. Uh, when you go to the, any type of, of store, or whether you're buying an automobile or a new iPhone or whatever you're buying, you have a very specific criteria of what you're looking for. And you might compare different, different choices, right? Oh, 
over here the the oranges are on sale over here the oranges are expensive right you'd be a a discriminating buyer and there would be criteria that would have to meet you'd pick up this orange and say oh well both of them are, are 50 cents an orange but this one has mold on it i don't like this one i like this one better right you right. would be discerning you wouldn't just buy the whole vegetable department or the whole store for that matter you say geez prices are really high why don't i find some bargains uh, right now. And that is the way I would go about this a hundred percent because at prices, these high, this high, I think it, 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 it does pay to be a discerning investor. And Buffett, when you hear him speak about this draws a line and he puts people in two piles. First pile is uneducated. He says, look, if you have no education buy the S and P, you know, it'll, it'll do okay. And if you're just trying to do well relative to the market, well, buy it and you'll be the market. But he says, for those that know how to discern and those that have criteria, it's complete madness. He, that's the word he uses. It strikes him as madness to spread your money about all this type of stuff at these incredibly high prices and, and just buy everything. And maybe you have 35 on your, you know, take the, t he calls it the, your, your list of attractiveness, right? Why would you put money in number 50 instead of number one or two uh, in your list of attractiveness? So the, the reason I say most investors are going to get screwed is they're going to be paying the most for getting the least in the name of diversification rather than being an educated, discerning business owner and pick a business, not a stock, right? Pick a business that you want to own and get cash flow from, not a stock. So, so, and I'm staying with price just for a minute. If you found two companies and let's say they're Jack in the box produce the same amount of money in the same amount of time, you would then, uh, hold on. I got to add one more. They both appear to be the same amount of stable. That's when price can kick in after everything else. Then you would look at the price and get the best, the lowest well, price. Everything else is the same. Not necessarily. I would look at, I'm also purchasing all the potential growth that's in here, right? So maybe one isn't paying right now because they're a new company gotcha. and they're reinvesting all their earnings into, they're not paying, you know, they're, they're making heavy investments. So that's where your statement of cash flows comes in. You know, my, what's my operational earnings, but maybe my, my, you know, financial and my investment uh, cash flow in that statement of cash flow. So it's, it's really, I, if they look like they're going to grow more, well, maybe I, maybe I'm buying the growth too. I'm not just buying the earnings. I'm buying how these earnings might grow. So this is financial education. And this is, this is, you know, the, the, the first pillar of investing, which is fundamental analysis. Understand that I'm buying a business, understand that business, the work that they do, understand their, uh, whether they're poised for growth or not. And, and understand whether they've actually produced some earnings before. So it's a, it's a wonderful education if you love the process of learning. It gives you so much confidence uh, to click the buy button when I'm looking at a stock, when I've done that research that fits my criteria. And it's easy to exit from mistakes. You know, it's tough to, you know, buy a business, uh, you know, and build a business yourself or buy a, you know, a fourplex or whatever if you're starting out. You know, you screw that up. How do you get un out from under that? You know, you have stock. It's pretty easy exit. Oh, this isn't working out. Click, you know, take a little loss right. and you're out. It's pretty, pretty easy to recover from a mistake. So, uh, so with that, yeah. So with that, that's why I feel that a person should be discerning. I'm not saying don't buy stocks. I'm saying don't diversify. And I'm saying know what you're getting. Uh, in relationship with pain, I would challenge anyone who claims they're an expert to say, how does that not make sense to get a good understanding of what you're receiving uh, when you pay something rather than just blindly pay? Uh, right. That's crazy. That's just crazy. Well, Andy, we do have to wrap up. So I apologize for that. But last time, anyone listening, sponsored by Cashflow Academy, Zero to Cashflow, the free course, which is in the description. It, it is really important that you guys check it out. Um, Andy, once again, I thank you for this. Hey, I love the time we spend each week. It's, it's, and I so 
congratulate everyone that comments and even if they're critical uh it's wonderful i guess the only people i had to cry is you can always people are pretty smart when they know someone's you know poaching and trying to just sell them something and it's kind of like i feel like you know i watch those people if, so, if i was in a public men's room and someone approached me to you know pitch me a deal <laughs> i'd wonder what they're and i kind of feel the same way when people do that you know uh so be careful but most people are pretty smart in the comments they do okay so all I'll right thanks that. andy Thanks All right, again. man. Thanks, I'll Greg. See we'll week. see you soon. Bye-bye. Right, Bye. This podcast is a presentation of Rich Dad Media Network.